Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. So let's talk about quadratic functions. Last time I suggested to you that a quadratic function is a second degree polynomial function like this. Anytime or anytime you have an x squared, for example. Okay. That's a quadratic function. That's an example of a quadratic function. Now, a quadratic function at most of you will see have, will have three terms. It doesn't have to have three terms. Here's another quadratic function. This one only has two. And here's another one. This only has two. Here's another one. This one only has one. But you see, all of these are second degree functions. Correct? These are all second degree uh, polynomial functions. This is a polynomial. It's a one term polynomial. It's a one term monomial. So this is a two term uh, 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 quadratic function. So any function that is a second degree uh, uh, function like this, it's called a quadratic function. Okay? So y equals 3x squared minus 4x plus 7. So this is a quadratic function. The generic version, if you like a generic version of a quadratic function, you can write it like this. f of x equals ax squared plus bx plus c. So this is kind of like, you know, a generic version. This is how these, uh, this is an uh, example of a uh, uh, gen generic uh, writing that, uh, of a quadratic function. In other words, they all look some version of this. In the example that I have given over here, a is 3, negative 4 is b, and 7 is the c. Okay? So, in this example, okay, 3 is a, negative 4 is b, and 7 is the c. So, the generic version of the quadratic function is, can be written as ax squared plus bx plus c f of x, or you can, you can say y equals this, f of x is another way of writing y, the function of x. This, in fact, if when you write quadratic function like this, this is called a standard form. The standard form of a quadratic function. It's not the only way of writing a quadratic function. Just like with the line, when you were writing a line ax plus by equals c, that's the standard form of writing a linear function. But there were other forms, like this one. That was the slope-intercept form and the point-slope form. So there were different ways of writing the same function, right? So they're all lines. Okay, but there are different ways. It's like writing first name, last name, last name, first name, and then first name, middle name, last name, last name, middle name, first name, etc. So there are three ways of writing quadratic functions that we're going to learn. This one is called a standard form. And then there's this one. This one is called the vertex form. And then finally, this form. And by the time we're done, inshallah, we'll be quite comfortable with these three forms. This is called the standard form. This is called the vertex form. And this one is called the x-intercept form. Today, I like to simply explore the first form over here. Okay, and then we'll talk about the others in the future. Now... y equals mx plus b this is a line this is called a linear function if you recall a linear function the x is first degree right a quadratic function is a third degree for example 3x squared plus 4x minus 2 that's a quadratic function if you're curious what's this called 3x cubed minus 4x squared minus 2. Okay. 
right? This is a third degree polynomial function, okay? Linear, quadratic, tertiary. And if you're curious to know what this is called, this is a quartic function. Quartic function. But that's just to make sure you say, well, that doesn't quad means for that's quadratic and that's quartic function, that's tertiary or third degree function. All right, back to our quadratic functions though. So this is the standard form of a quadratic function. Okay. An example of a quadratic function in a standard form is this. Now, to understand quadratic functions, however, we're going to start out with the simplest of the quadratic function, and that's this one, y equals x squared, single term. So this is the simplest of the quadratic function, and it's called the parent function. In other words, if you understand this function, you understand the family of the quadratic functions, their behavior, how they look and how they behave, in uh, so to speak. So a parent function is the most fundamental, the most basic form of that class of function functions. So if you understand this function, you understand the whole family of quadratic functions. So we're going to start off with this. If you recall from algebra 1, so this is, as I have already suggested, is a parabola. So, but let's just start slow. So let's make a table of this function like this. And let's pick some values here. Okay. I'm going to write this as f of x equals this function of x. So let's find out what is the value of y or the function when x is 0. That's f of 0. Well, then you substitute that for this, and that's 0 squared. That is 0, of course. And f of 1 is 1 squared. That's 1. And f of 2 is substitute 2 in place of x. You get 2 squared, which is 4. And f of 3, 3 squared, and that's 9. And negative 1, so you have f of negative 1, is negative 1 squared, and that's 1. f of negative 2 is negative 2 squared, and that is 4. And negative 3, negative 3 squared is 9. And you can even see here, 0, 1, 4, 9, 0, 1, 4, 9, kind of like mirror. So then, now let's graph this. When x is 0, y is 0. That's this point right here, okay? And when x is 1, y is 1. That's point right there. When x is 2, y is 4, right there. When x is 3, it's 9, like over here. All right, on the other side, when x is negative 1, it's also 1. When x is negative 2, it's 4. x is negative 3, it's 9, way up there. And if you were to connect the dots over here, you'd get something like this. And that's, this is artistic rendition, of course. Not meant to be exact. So this is the graph of this function right here. So this is y equals x squared. When you graph a function like this in a Cartesian plane, an x and y plane, it's, first of all, it's good manners to write some of these down like this, so the reader is not guessing what these dots are. So that's supposed to be 4 here. OK. And it's also good to label the graph like this, okay? You have to it's like give the graph the name tag, so to speak. So you can see when you when you graph this function, you get a parabola. So 
So let's do it over here. Y equals X squared. See? You get this parabola. Okay? So this is called, if you zoom out a little bit, see? It's like that. It's a parabola. Okay. Now, allow me to suggest to you of some characteristics of parabola. So I'm going to draw a parabola here. So here is a parabola. Okay. It's not the best parabola here. Let's try it again. Okay. That will have to do. So this is a parabola. Every parabola has a turning point. So this is an upward facing parabola. But if the parabola was like this, it would also have a turning point like this. In fact, maybe I should draw a downward sloping parabola. So let's, how about this one? That's pretty good. So this is a parabola and this turning point. Okay, That point right there is the vertex of the parabola. And the vertex has a, is an ordered pair. Okay, it's an x and y. Okay, but the vertex as an ordered pair is given as special n names. Okay, many books call it h and k, that ordered pair h and k, and that's okay. But we call it actually vx and vy. Okay, this means the x coordinate of the vertex and the y coordinate of the vertex. Okay, so as soon as you know the vertex of the parabola, just graph it. Okay. All right, and then, as you know, the parabola has is symmetrical, and therefore it has this axis of symmetry or line of symmetry. Axis or line of symmetry. It's very important. As soon as you know the vertex, as soon as you know what the vertex is. So you can you can graph this line of symmetry because it's going to go to the vertex. In fact, it's going to go through this point right here, the vx. And the axis of symmetry for this parabola is a vertical line. And the, all vertical lines have equations that start with x equals something, right? And x equals, in this case, x is going to equal to vx. So that is the equation of this vertical line right there. Okay, so the equation of the axis of symmetry is this. Okay, because it's a vertical line. And you also appreciate the half of the parabola is here, the other half of the parabola is on the other side. Correct? Because it's symmetrical. Parabolas are symmetrical. That's why it's called line of symmetry. Half of the parabola is here, half of the parabola is here. So, which also means that every point has a corresponding point on the other side. They're like but best buddy points. Okay? Because they're symmetrical points. Now the vertex is important. Because a parabola can look like this, uh, U-shaped, or a parabola can look like this, or an N-shaped, or going down. This point, this vertex, okay, and this vertex, okay. Now this vertex will be the lowest point of, of this parabola. And this Y value, okay, not the whole vertex, but the Y value, is called the minimum of the parabola. Minimum of the function. I mean, how low did it get? Right? So in terms, for example, if a, if a bird is flying, the bird went like this and like that, how low did it get? And that's the VY. This function, okay, since it's going to be is facing this way, this value right here, the VY over there, the Y value the parabola, will be the maximum of the function. Okay. So, here's the basic terminology then about parabolas. The vertex. And the vertex has an ordered pair, and that ordered pair is this. The, the X ver uh, coordinate of the vertex is VX, and the Y coordinate of the vertex is the VY. As soon as you know the vertex, do yourself a favor and draw the line of symmetry to help you join the parabola. And the equation of the line of symmetry is, is X equals VX because it goes to that point. All right? And this will be the maximum value. The VY will be the maximum value of this vertex. And if the right row was, uh, uh, was going like this, it would be the minimum value of the vertex. Okay, so now we know some basic terminology that's associated 
with the parabola. Okay, now we just graph this function. This is the parent quadratic function. Okay, that was this. Okay, so this parent quadratic function looks like this. Correct? So this is f of x equals x squared. Now, I'd like to ask you, what does this look like? y equals negative x squared. Well, if you wanted to, you could make a table for this. But you realize this. For when the difference between these two graphs is whatever x is, this will be the opposite of that, so, of that right? So this graph will, in fact, will be like a mirror image of this graph, like this. Okay. So this would be y equals negative x squared. Okay, because every y value here will be flipped like over here. We'll go from there straight down over to flipped because of this negative. Okay. So let's see. Let's see if we can do that over here. So y equals negative x squared. And there it is. See? It's a mirror image of the parent function over here. Okay, that's good. So we know what that looks like. How about this function? y equals 3x squared. How does this function compare to this function over here? Okay. Well, let me ask you this. Would you rather be paid this or would you rather be paid this? Assuming that you wanted to make money so you can, you know, do some good things. Uh, so, if you wanted, if you, if you, if you rather be paid more, you wanted to be paid that because you get more money. For every x value, you get more y values. So this graph, see, will go higher, be like skinnier, like this. Okay. So this would be y equals three x squared. This is a cartoon drawing, of course. Let's see how it looks over here. Okay, um, I'm going to get rid of this one, I think. 3x squared, see? Now look at this, see, skinnier. Okay, go up faster. So that's this graph. Okay, now look, let's go back to the original function, the parent function, that's that. That's the parent function. So now you realize, if you know the parent function, you know this. That's going to be the mirror image. And you know this, y equals 3x squared. And that's, that one's going to go up faster, like, like that we just said, OK? OK, how about this one? y equals 1 half x squared. Would you rather be paid this? Would you rather be paid this? Yes, you'd rather be paid that. Because this is less money. It's going to go up slower. So this graph is going to be fatter like this. You know? I didn't draw that properly, but you get the idea. It's like that. Let's go up slower. Okay, y equals one half x squared. Let's draw that. Let's see what happens. Okay, so let's do this one. Y equals zero point five x squared. See, that's the green graph. Okay, the green graph is going slower. The parent function is the red one. The blue one is three x squared. And the green one is one half x squared. Now, if, if if I make that even smaller number, look at that. That's really going slow, but still a parabola. See, if you zoom out, that's what you get. But compared to the parent function, is going up much slower. Okay, so now we have explored this. Look what we have explored so far. So we know this, and we know what this looks like. And we know what this looks like. And we know what this looks like. Okay. How about this? What does this look like? See, this graph will go up faster like this. Okay. But this graph, okay, will be the same blue graph, purple graph. It'll just be moved up three like this, but it won't be fat or skinny. It'll be just same graph. It's like you can just drag it down and it'll fit right on top of the other one. So this is called a vertical shift, see? Vertical shift. 
three units. It's moving up by three units. The whole graph is moving up by three units like this. You follow? So it's, let's do it over here. So let's get rid of some of this. So I have, I have x squared. Watch this. Ta-da, see? If the same graph moved up, and if I could, if you drag it down, it would fit right, right uh, on top of each other. Okay? So that's that graph. Okay, this is what we have learned about, about quadratic functions so far. So we know what this looks like. We know what this looks like. Okay, that's the mirror image over here, right? That was the mirror image. Okay. And we know what this looks like. They'll go up faster. And we know its counterpart, y equals 1 half x squared. That'll be, go up slower. And we also know what this looks like. It's a vertical shift by 5. You know, go up by 5, right? Okay. Now, just as a challenge, see if the y equals negative x squared plus 3. How does that look like? Well, it would be, ne be this graph moved up three units. So it would be like this, but the same looking graph. So if you had like this, for example, see? See, it's moved up by three units as the vertex, okay? Okay, now, now we come to a different. Now look at this one. How about this function? What does that look like? Hmm. So this is going to be interesting because this time, see, it's not going, this whole graph is going to move either somewhere. It's going to look like this. It's not going to be centered at the origin, okay? So now we explore this. Now this is a quadratic function given to us in the standard form that you must understand. ax squared plus bx plus c, where a here is 1, b is 4, and c is 3. Okay? Alright, so how do we graph this? Okay, this is the last topic of the day. So to graph this, when you're given a quadratic function in the standard form, you have to know this formula. Opposite of b over 2a. You can't go very far graphing these unless you know this, okay? Now this formula gives you how the how to find the vx value. The way you find, to draw the parabola, you need to know where the vertex is, okay? You need to know the vertex. The way you find the vertex is first you find vx. And once you find the vx, you can find vy. How? Because once you know the x value of the function, you can substitute the x value of the function in the, the, the corresponding y values. Let me say that again. Once you find the x value of the function, you can substitute that x value into the function and find the corresponding y value, the, the buddy uh, y value in that ordered pair. So once you know the vx, you can substitute that in here and find the vy. Okay? So then you would have the vy. Okay? So the vx, vy. So let's do that. So Vx here is going to be opposite of B over 2A. So you write this down. You always write these down formulas. It's so much helpful. So opposite of B. B here is 4 over 2 times A. A is 1. Okay. And here we go. So that's negative 4 over 2. And that is negative 2. So now I have the Vx. So now that I have the Vx, I can substitute the Vx over here and find the corresponding Vy. So Vy is going to be, or f of negative 2, which is going to be negative 2 squared plus 4 times negative 2 plus 3. So that's 4 minus 8 plus 3. So that's negative 4 plus 3, which is negative 1. So now I have the vertex. The vertex is negative 2, negative 1. All right, so here you go. Negative 2, negative 1. So that's the, the vertex. Now, as I said, as soon as you knew the vertex, first label the vertex, okay, that's negative 2, negative 1, 
Okay, x-axis, y-axis, I'm trying to set a good example for you. So yeah, because you should label some of these like that. And then as soon as you have the vertex, as I said, just draw the axis of symmetry like this. Okay, just do yourself a favor, draw, draw it out. And then you see, you have to ask yourself, okay, is this parabola U-shaped or is it N-shaped? Okay, and then you realize that this is going to be a U-shape because A is positive. It's going to behave like this parent function. It's not going to behave like this parent function. Because the A is positive, this, this parabola is going to face up. It's going to be a U. Okay? So it's going to look like this, something like that, okay? So, but we need to find a couple other points. So we need a point here and a point here. We really need only three points, okay? Well, you can have more, but we only need three. One easy point to choose, for, at least for my point, is a plug in a zero. What happens when x is zero? What's f of zero? Because if you substitute zero over here, you get zero plus four times zero plus three. That's zero, zero, and that get three, right? So when x is 0, y is 3. And then it will have its sister point over here, 2 over here, 2 over here, and that's over here. And so x is 0 and 3, and this is going to be negative 4 and 3 over here. And then I can draw this out, see. I'm going to use uh, this yellow over here. I'm going to do like artistic drawing kind of over here, okay? because you know, they, turn, they tend to turn out better. So here it is. And this is the graph of, of f of x. Okay? So that's how you graph a function, a quadratic function that's given to you in standard form. Let's do it here on a graph in theory. So, plus 4x plus 3. There we go. So there is our parabola. So let's put the axis of symmetry in here. And there is our axis of symmetry. I draw that out. See that? The equation of the axis of symmetry is negative 2. Now if I ask you, what's the minimum of this, of this function? What's the minimum of this function, the minimum value? The correct answer would be negative 1. The way, that, that value right there, negative 1. The, that value, that's the minimum of the function. So as a review, when you're given a quadratic function in the standard form, like this, the way you graph it is first you have to find the vertex, and the way you do that is by memorizing this. Okay, You have to memorize Vx equals opposite of B over 2A. And from this, after you found this, you can find Vy by uh, substituting the vx in the original function to get the corresponding values. And once you have that, you have the vertex. And once you have the vertex, you can graph the vertex, whatever that is. And then you make the axis of symmetry. Okay, kind of, let me do a dotted line over here. Dotted lines are harder to draw over here. And then you need two points here, one here, one here. And then just, just substitute any x values that's convenient, uh, this is zero. And then you draw the parabola like that. So that's how you graph a quadratic function that's given to you in standard form. This you must know. This knowledge that we have here, you must master this. Inshallah. Next time we'll continue with this. I'll give you uh, more examples, and then we'll continue from there. So, and then finally, just as a review, this is in standard form, and. This is how you graph it. Next time we shall talk about the other two form, the vertex form, and finally the x-intercept form. So that's the standard form. That's the vertex form. And this is the x-intercept form. So until next time then, Salatu wassalamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Salamu alaykum.